Hi there, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. Hey, you're about to watch a recording of the April 2017 Online Trader Summit presented by Metastock. This quarterly event put together by our own Jeff Gibby highlights some of the industry's best traders, and I know you're really going to enjoy it. Hey, if you haven't tried Metastock yet and would like to have an extended three-for-one trial, visit metastock.com slash traders dash summit three-for-one, or just click one of the <laughs> things provided and get your free trial. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. For everybody that's attending today, we have talked a lot about Metastock and the fact that it's run best software in its price category every year since I believe 1994. It's amazing. Um, and we're very, very proud of that. Uh, I believe the reason that we win best software is because it's very, very useful for people for finding opportunities in the market, testing those trading ideas. We're going to offer you an extended trial. Uh, if you pay for a month, we're going to give you three months to evaluate it. If it's a very low risk opportunity for you. Take a look at it at metastock.com slash summit 3 for one or give us a call. Our phone number is 800-882-3040 or um, uh, you can also visit us online at metastock.com forward slash sales chat. Okay, let's get right on to the next speaker, um, Hubert Centers. What do I have to say about Hubert? Hubert is the epitome of a southern gentleman. Uh, one of the nicest guys I've ever met, very, very straightforward, very down to earth, and uh, has a very, very interesting way of looking at Heiken Ashi. So let's go ahead and bring him on. Hubert, I'm going to turn your microphone on. Audio one, two, audio one, two, one, two. Uh, confirmed Houston, three, four, Houston, three, four. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, you should have control of the screen. It should ask you if you want to see your screen. I'm going to tell you I can see your screen before I let you go. Okay. There you have it. It is up. Okay. Now, thankfully, I do not have a webcam like Jeff and Todd because I have a face for radio. Thank God you all will not have to look at me this morning. Yeah, but you have one of the... Right? But you have one of the coolest trading offices of anyone. So, you know, Man, I appreciate it. Thanks. you guys should check out. You, you, like, I have a whole tour of Hubert's office. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, the secret bookcase door and the other secret uh, room. Yep. There's I'll send you the link if you want to. I'll send you the link if you want to. If you want me to drop it in there. Everybody, yeah. listen to Hubert. He's the man. He's got great stuff. I'll, I'll leave now. Good luck, Hubert. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> I'll also get out of your way. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach you how to find stuff using Ichimoku. All right, at the end of the presentation, if you want to learn more about it, I got a course. If you want to take it, great. And if you don't, I don't really care. Um, but I'm going to be working in PowerPoint half the time and then in Metastock's charting platform the rest of the time. And I'm going to show you. And I, actually, uh, Jeff built an EXE file where you can just download this and it'll do all this stuff for you automatically in their platform. I'm going to show you how to use that uh, and go through the steps of that. All right. So first, before I start, I got to cover the blanket disclaimer. Heads up, you're going to die broke trying to learn how to trade. All right, That's the gist of the uh, warning disclaimer. It is very important that you do read this warning disclaimer, CFTC Rule 4.41. I'm going to be showing you some hypothetical, back-tested stuff, and then I'm also going to talk to you how I actually use this stuff in real life. All right, so you should never trade more money than you can afford to lose because the odds are you may blow up two or three times and you may not, you may make zero money. Now, I like to make the warning disclaimer even, even more over the top and say your trading career is going to end up like a bad country song in reverse. Uh, your, your wife is going to leave you, probably for your best friend. Your dog will die because there are no cats in country songs. Um, they are going to repossess your Ford or Chevy pickup truck. And they are also going to foreclose on your single wide or double wide trailer. If you understand the disclaimer that I just made you aware of, give me a yes in the chat box really quick. That way, if the CFTC or the NFA audit this, they'll be like, okay, he, he, tried to scare, he tried to scare the shit out of him about trading, and that's what I'm supposed to do. All right. All right. So my name is Hubert Sinners. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate the introductions. Um, I'm, I'm kind of known in the in industry. Um, <laughs> yes, doesn't scare me. That's funny. 
Um, I'm kind of known in the industry as the guy with a no BS approach to investing and trading. I don't know why I think it's just because I kind of call things how I see them, good, bad, or indifferent. Sometimes it gets me in trouble with exchanges um, and brokerage firms because I'll be like, hey, that's crooked. You shouldn't be doing stuff like that. And and sometimes they don't ask me to speak back again if I, if I, if I say something wrong. One time I was uh, at a trade show, and they were asking five people up on the panel, like, all right, what's your – trade what, what, what do you do before the market what's your homework and everybody had these real long explanations and I was like I wake up uh, I take a piss and then I wash my hands and then I start trading and they never asked me back for that and again because like they just thought it was too offensive and I was like that's really what I do that's I've already done my homework the night before and everybody else used all the the great answers so that's all I have so um when I was 17 I grew up in the the rural mountains of eastern Kentucky so when I was about 17 I had a few things that I could have done when I was a kid. Uh, I could have been a, a, a factory worker. Both my mother and father were factory workers. They worked at uh, a, a plant called American Standard. You've probably seen some of their plumbing fixtures, their faucets, their sinks, their commodes, and stuff like that. I tried it a couple summers in between uh, college, and I wanted to blow my brains out. No, nothing personal. If you work at a factory, hey, I got it. It just drove me crazy. Uh, could have been a coal miner. I didn't. I didn't really like dark, damp, enclosed spaces with the uh, proposition of dying from a cave-in, drowning, or electrocution. So I was like, I'm not doing that. Now, there's other, there's three other industries that you can do in eastern Kentucky where I grew up. You could be a, a, a meth dealer, like Breaking Bad. You could be in the weed business, like marijuana, not the legal kind, the illegal kind. Or you could have been a moonshiner. All right. Now, all three of these, if I would have done them, I would have done them halfway decent, right? And I would have probably spent some time in the federal penitentiary. I have never been in the federal penitentiary, but I can just imagine how that would end, fighting Bubba over who gets the bottom or who gets the top bunk. Now, what I did is I went on a uh, on my personal journey. So I left right here, and I started where everybody else starts from, zero. And I wanted to make a lot of cash like everybody else in the United States, right? So what I did is I went out and I started doing old school apprenticeships. Uh, under other people that were wealthy and successful and found out that there were three really good ways to make money in in, in the U.S. And they are trading and investing, uh, real estate, and or businesses. So I do all three of these. Now, there are times when all three of these are making money. It's not usually the norm. Usually if you're trading and investing is going well, you're not focusing on your real estate or your business. Or if your business is uh, doing really well, you'll focus on something else. So what I do is I try to take money from the markets and invest them in these things right here. And you heard Todd talk about that too. He made a really good successful trade, and now he owns a, a, a percentage equity in a distillery. I think it's a smart thing to do because what we do for a living is very, very risky. So we try to re remove money from the markets and invest it in either real estate or other businesses. All right. We also still trade. So I've never met anybody that went from zero to hero, whatever your number is, in less than five to eight years. It's going to be a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and it's going to be hard. It's not just going to fall from the sky, oddly enough. You're going to have to put in a lot of time if you want to be successful at anything. Heads up, you're going to work your ass off in order to do so. I've also never heard of many by that's went kind of like the stair-step methodology that a lot of people teach. Uh, what I have found is being around other multimillionaires and a couple billionaires is there's a couple people that will get lucky and they're smart enough to figure out that they got lucky and then everybody else just has failure after failure after failure and then we just eventually figure out what we need to do in order to get to our destination or our goal all right now Todd did say Todd does have a YouTube video of my trading office um, uh, cuz he's been here we call it affectionately the bat cave when I was a kid growing up I watched a lot of Scooby Doo uh, Batman and the Ghost of Mr. Chicken and that all those little uh, movies and films and TV shows they had all these bookcase doors that led to secret passages in those houses and I was like if I quote unquote ever make it and I'm successful I'm gonna have those you know throughout my house and I've got them throughout my house so in my office I don't have a physical office office I work from home um, the entire upper uh, upper level of my house is all family the entire bottom of my house is all office so what you do is you go downstairs and down in the bottom of the house there's this bookcase where you pull this book and you click that button and it opens up into about a 1500 to 1800 foot office 
And then we've got shuffleboard down here. We've got ping pong. We've got big screen TVs. We've got a little ki a kitchen area. Uh, there's uh, obviously a bathroom, a couple bedrooms. There's a, a private gym, and there's a, a sauna and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of how I commute to work every day. It takes all of about five seconds. Now, I don't show you or tell you any of this to impress you because, number one, I don't think it's impressive at all. Uh, I tell you and show you all this stuff to impress upon you that if a fat redneck from Kentucky can be successful, I think you got a shot too. Now, is it going to be in the markets? I don't know. It may be in real estate and it may be in business. But what we're talking about here today is uh, trading and investing. So I'm going to walk through one of the strategies that I kind of rely on a lot to teach people how to find better trades for new trending up moves or new trending down moves. And it, and it really is a, it's my cheat. It's my hack to let me know like what's going on. All right. So congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time. I'm going to walk you through how many of you in here really quickly. I don't have access to the survey function. Are you, are you a fundamentalist or are you a technician? Are you, <laughs> I don't have a bat pole that I slide on. No, unfortunately, no. Um, are you a technician? Are you a chartist? Or are you a fundamentalist? I don't think there's anything wrong with fundamentals if you're into it. I would probably trade the fundamentally strong stocks technically instead of just fundamentals because I've seen a billion things where the fundamentals look great and they go to zero. I've also seen where the fundamentals look like crap and they just go screaming higher, right? All right. So let's talk about what this works on, all right? This works on stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds, gold, and commodities. And we're going to go through, I'm going to do my homework in front of you live over Thursday's markets and Friday's markets to do my trading plan for the next week so that you'll know what I'll be trading. And if you want to follow along, let's trade. All right, so... But first, I have to teach you how to use this stuff. And first, what we got to figure out is what is our time frame that we are going to be playing with. My favorite time frames. Now, the time frames that this will work on are day trading, swing trading, and investing. So it'll work on all three. You just have to figure out what time frame you like the best. Okay. And then, really quick, are you more as a group here? Are you more of a are you more of a trend trader or are you a counter trend trader? Uh, so really quick, that'll let me know, like the audience here. Are you more of a trend trader or are you more of a counter trend trader? Can't really be both. You got to be more of one than the other, right? It's kind of like, it's almost like sex. You swing one way or the other. Most of us don't swing both ways, right? All right, so you're more of trend traders. All right, perfect. All right, so this will be different, but in a good way. All right, we're going to have fun. We're going to uh, joke around and, and cut up and stuff. And life is too short. I've never met anybody that gets out alive. Um, so uh, we will definitely have fun here. All right, the following is back testing results on the S&P 500. On the S&P 500, out of 500 stocks, it worked successfully on 430, which is about an 86% hit rate, which is better than me just guessing. Um, now, if you would have taken every long, every short, every long, every short, every long, every long, then your return would have been a potential of 33%. Now, you can use a little common sense here and increase that from 33 to 79 if you'll just remove the counter trend signals and wait for a three-day or a three-bar confirmation. Here's what I mean by that. If you've got this screaming uptrend like the NASDAQ is right now, okay, and um, and you're just shorting stuff, you're probably not having a ton of success. So what I want you to do is focus on the overall trend and stay on the right side of that, okay? Now, that's on the S&P 500. It's also been profitable on 29 currencies over the last 10 years, all right? Uh, daily, hourly, and 10-minute is my preferred time frame. Daily, hourly, and 10-minute. So let's go through the time frame selection. So on your chart, do you see a thing that says time frame selection? I need to make sure that we're all on the same page here really quickly. Because, okay, all right. So here is one of the most important slides in the presentation. If I'm looking at a daily chart, and we're going to look mainly at dailies just on the confines of time. I can't go through multiple time frame analysis in 60 minutes. It's too complicated. All right? It just takes up too much time. We're going to focus mainly on the daily, but I'm also going to show you how I use the hourly and the 10 um, in the concepts of my time horizon. If I'm looking at a daily chart, then my time horizon, all right, so here's my chart time frame. 
then my time horizon is going to be weeks. So it's going to be at least two weeks probably. More than one. Weeks, plural, means more than one. So I'm probably going to be in this thing a minimum of two weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the cloud is going to extend to, extend to the right at least one month, 20 to 30 days, all right? If I'm looking at an hourly chart, then that implies I'm going to be in the, the trade for my time horizon is going to be days, 2 to 21 days. Could be more, could be slightly less, okay? And it's going to extend to the right 3 to 5 days. 3 to 5 days to the right is what the Ichimoku cloud is going to extend there. Now, if I'm looking at a 10-minute time frame, <coughs> excuse me, I can get a quick drink. <coughs> if I'm looking at a 10-minute time frame, then I'm going to be in this trade for four hours. So does that make sense? Daily time frame, I'm probably going to be in it for a few weeks. Hourly time frame, I'm going to be in it for uh, three to five days. 10-minute time frame, I'm going to be in it for a minimum of four hours. Does everybody follow the logic so far? Now, you can go down the time zone. You can also go up the time zone. These are just my favorites. Daily, hourly, 10 minute. You can see I've got one for five. There's one, one minute. There's a tick. There's weekly. There's monthly. Uh, for swing or core, you could use either the you could use uh, the weekly. Right? If you're weekly core, like this right here. If you're doing a longer, longer term hold, you don't want to do the monthlies. All right. Uh, do you use a 10 minute for intraday as, as well? Yes, I use a 10 minute for intraday for the most part. Yes. All right, so this is what you want. It's been the number one technique used in Japan seven years in a row. There's been this number one technical analysis book, and the uh, main component of that book has been Ichimoku. And I don't know if you've ever tried to translate something from Japanese to English and then to redneck. Um, it is. It can be quite expensive, and it can be a pain in the ass to do so. All right. It, you're going to know exactly what's happening in seconds. It's designed to produce a very clear trend signals. Now, when we look at the charts, here's what we're going to look at. We're either we're going to go when we go through the live part, and I'm going to be using Metastock and Reuters. What we're going to be going through is we're going to be going through hell yes, a maybe is a no, and a no is a no. So when we look at the charts, if it's not screaming to us, this is a hell yes long or a hell yes short, we're just going to leave it alone to increase our advantage, okay? So just remember that when you're going through your charts on your homework, and we'll spend some time doing it in just a few seconds. So let's get to uh, this. This is the edge for you now. Um, how many of you have used, uh, you've probably had indicators that worked and showed you what happened in the past? Some will tell you what's happening in the present. Very few will show you what's happening in the future. And Todd just spoke just in front of me, and I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Todd's work. Anytime I have a uh, uh, a question on Elliott Wave, I just pick up the phone and call Todd and go, hey, dude, what's the count here? We're going higher, we're going lower. So you don't want to rely on stuff that tells you what's the past. The future's okay, and the or the present's okay. The future's better. There's a few indicators that will do this. Fibs will do this. Uh, Elliott Wave will do this. And also Ichimoku will do this. So those are the top three that will kind of project for you in the future what may happen. Does that make sense? So those are the three indicators that I like for future projections. So let's learn the nitty-gritty of this. Do you have a chart? It's just a black chart uh, with a price action and a little blue thing going through it. You see that? We're going to use. We're going to learn the components of how to use this creature right now. And then I've got Metastock set up so we go through it live. You'll be able to see this all live in nice HD detail. All right. So the main theory of Ichimoku is as follows. If you're above the blue thingy, which is called the cloud, if you're above this blue thingy, if the price action is above the blue thingy, then the theory is you want to stay long, okay? If the price action is below the blue thingy, and, and when it happens, it'll actually turn from blue to red. Then you want to stay short, okay? Does that make sense? And now the second theory is this blue thingy, which is called the cloud, C-L-O-U-D, is going to act like a nice little fluffy pillow or a mini trampoline, or it won't work very very good, or it'll work decent, work decent, work decent, work decent. Now, on this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven signals. It was right six out of seven times. Does it always work that way? No, it does not always work that way. But what it's telling us is that's the overall support for this particular thing. Now, 
let's take a look and look at the rest of the lines here. All right. So this is the first one. So everybody type in cloud, C-L-O-U-D. This is the best way to learn this stuff. Just type in cloud into the chat box. That makes sure that my audio is still working. And also make sure that you're paying attention and taking notes and you're not over surfing on Facebook and doing some crazy stuff. All right. All right. That's the cloud. All right. That's going to tell you what's going to happen in the future is it's trading sideways to slightly higher. That is the future projection of this thing. It's saying, hey, if I sell off, it's going to hold that. And if I don't hold that, I'm going to close one, two, three bars below that, and I'm going to get smoked to the downside. All right. This yellow line is called the turning line. So everybody type in T-U-R-N. T-U-R-N. T-U-R-N is for turning line. All right. Now, this is going to be the fast or the weak support. The third line, so here we've got cloud, C-L-O-U-D. Here we have turning line, T-U-R-N. And now this one's going to be standard line, S-T-D. So just everybody type in there, standard for S-T-D. One, two, so we have a lot of people in here with STDs. That's awesome. Um, so you can see that we've got a medium support line here. Okay. Now, the theory is the yellow, if you're in a massive uptrend, this thing's just going to bounce off of that and then scream high. But if that weak support doesn't hold, the next place it's going to go is yellow to purple. If the purple does not hold, if the yellow and the purple don't hold, we're going to go either to the top of the cloud or the bottom of the cloud. Does that make sense? Now, there's a lagging piece of this. This is the only lagging piece. All the rest of this is in real time. So this is the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. This is the turning line, T-U-R-N. This is the standard line. And then this is actually, believe it or not, called the lagging line. So type in lagging line. Now, here's why I like this indicator so much. I wish I would have invented it. I didn't. I have uh, the number one selling class on how to use it the proper way, but I did not invent this thing. It's on all good platforms out there. If you have a platform that it's not on, you have a crappy platform. You may want to switch, okay? So this tells you what's happening in the past. This tells you what's happening now, also known as the present. And this tells you what's probably going to happen in the future. So now you have the past, the present, and the future. There's not a whole lot of indicators that'll do that for you, okay? And the cool thing is it's free on almost every platform out there. And Jeff has a scanner that's going to show you how to scan for this stuff new above or below the cloud, all right? So let's go through a couple signals that you can look at. So there are... First, let's walk through how all these lines are calculated and what are they, okay? All right, so uh, the, the first line that's closest to the price action here is this red line. That's called the turning line. How you calculate that is it's the midpoint calculation where you're going to take the high and the low of the last nine days, and you're going to divide that by two. Now, you don't really have to worry about that, but doctors and engineers think it's important, so that's why I put it on here. The platform will show you, and I'll bring up Metastock here in just a second, okay? So that number is going to be calculated like this. Uh, here's today. We're going to count back nine bars. We're going to grab the low, which is 434.39. We're going to grab the high. We're going to add those two creatures together and divide them by two. Now, here's the cheater math, and just in case you suck at math like me. I know in both uh, high school and college, I got D's. In, in algebra, not Bs, Ds. So if I can handle this stuff, you can handle it too. Cool thing about all the platforms, they just go ahead and calculate it for you and do the math for you. So that's that number. Now, the next number, check this out, is the standard line, midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. You're going to take the high and the low of the last 26 bars. You're going to divide that by two. That's going to give you your standard line. That number is the midpoint. Okay, so it's a midpoint average is what this is. It's not a moving average. It's a midpoint average. So what you're going to do is you're going to take today's price action. You're going to count back 26 bars. You're going to uh, identify the low. You're going to identify the high. You're going to add the low to the high. And you're going to divide that by two. That's going to give you 425.42. Now, the cool thing about this is you already know a little bit about Ichimoku, just enough to be dangerous. If we come from below the cloud, we should be bearish. We went into the cloud. Overhead resistance held us pretty well. If we break this area, which is 450.07, 450.07, where's the next place we will probably go? We'll probably go 
target one to right here at the bottom of the cloud. If target one does not stay held, in other words, if it keeps going lower, which it looks like in this case it's going to, then we're going to go back down here to the standard line, which is going to be 425.42. Does that make sense logically, emotionally? I don't know about spiritually, but logically and emotionally, let's go with that. Okay, all right. The next place, let's talk about how you calculate that cloud. And these clouds are going to flip-flop sometimes, so you're going to have to flip the calculation sometimes. Don't worry about this because the software is just going to do it for you, okay? The midpoint of the turning line in the standard shifted 26, 26 bars forward. All right, so here's the turning line. There's the standard line. How do we know that red line is the turning line? It's the one closest to the price section. How do we know that the green line is the standard line? It's the one second closest to the price section. Then we're just going to take A, point A, and point B. We're going to look at the midpoint. We're going to forecast it or project it in the future, 26 bars. That's how we get one half of the cloud. Here's how you get the other half. Boom, boom, project it. Now, if we're looking at the cloud span B, it's a little different. It's the midpoint of the low of the last 52 sessions. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to take today here. We're going to go back 52 bars. We're going to look at the midpoint, and we're going to project in the future 26 bars. Now, don't let any of this com uh, confuse you or freak you out. The platforms do it all for you, which is the cool part, okay? Now, lagging line is just really simple. It is just the price action shifted back in the past 26 bars, okay? And we're going to use that for confirmation. So here are some sample Ichimoku cloud charting signals. Lagging line crossing the cloud is probably the strongest, but it's also the slowest signal. One we're going to learn about today is the price line crossing the cloud, which is a new identification of a new uptrend or a new downtrend. It's kind of like the Goldilocks trade. Not too fast, not too slow, just right. There are other signals that you can pay attention to. Price and lagging line touching the cloud, the cloud spans crossing, the turning line crossing the standard line. You can get into all those. It's a little bit different. And uh, like I said, I only have an hour here, so I can't teach you all of it. All right. So I want to walk you through the slow one and the, Go the Goldilocks one. So in this example, this is the lagging line. This is a very old chart of Apple, okay? When Apple used to trade at $700 back in the day, right? So the lagging line crossed the cloud, which should now be a short, okay? Now, do you remember how the lagging line was calculated? It's really laggy, all right? So actually, you wouldn't be short until about right here because that's back in the past. So you'd be short about, mm, let's just call it 600 for easy math. Well, no, it ain't even 600. Let's say, let's say 590, okay? And then you'd have to wait for the lagging line to go back above the cloud, which means the price action would probably be eh, around 520 when it happened. So we would make a trade from short from 550 and cover at 520, okay? That's not a bad trade. This is not a really good trade. Now, notice what I did not say we are doing. We are not shorting at the dead high, and we are not covering at the dead low. That is fantasy land. That stuff does not really happen. I've been trading for 25 years. Well, the other day I shorted the bonds at the very top tick, but I didn't get the very bottom tick, all right? It happens. This is very rare, okay? So if you're trying to chase, you know, getting the dead low and the dead high, that's a sucker game, and for fools only, be careful on that stuff, all right? Now, a better trade setup that I like is letting the candles close below the cloud. One close, one candle below the, uh, the cloud would be aggressive. Two would be moderate. Three would be conservative. And then if we want to do the plus to that, if once we have one bar and the lagging line goes with us, that's a plus. Uh, two bars and the lagging lines with us, that's a plus. Three lines and the lagging line, that's a plus signal. So that's how I gauge that stuff. So in this example, we would be short around eh, 520, and then if we had one, two, three closes, it would be 480. You see the difference in P&L that you could potentially get? So it's a little bit better. It's at basically double what you would normally get of doing just the lagging line touch or crossing the cloud. Now, there's also other sig uh, signals you can take, lagging line touching the cloud, price touching the cloud. You can get into crisscross trades when the turning and the standard line do the crisscross trades. So here are some bullish signals that you can rely on. Price above the cloud is bullish. Price in the cloud are bullish if they come from the bullish side. The lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal 
of trend change. Price crossing the cloud is an earlier but less reliable warning of trend change. Price and lagging line will often find support at the cloud's edges. Cloud spans crossing may be a sign that the trend is changing. Be on the lookout for thick clouds after a run-up, which could mean that the trend is about to change. Those are some bullish signals that you need to pay attention to. Now, the bear signals are going to be the polar opposites. So I'm going to flip these up here. You let me know once you're done reading them. I'm going to grab a quick drink of water. As soon as you're done reading, just say done, and then I'll start talking again as soon as we get enough people typing in done. All right. And now what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to scan for these bad boys. All right, we got a few people done. Let's see. Yeah, a few more. Oh, you're you're welcome, James. Were they good? Good good brownies, right? Yeah. <laughs> they were yummy. Yeah, they were really good. All right, so those are the bearish signals. Now, um, make sure that you're using good risk reward ratios. Uh, remember the time frame selection. I like the daily, hourly, and ten minute. All right. And then multiple time frame analysis. Once again, my favorite is the daily, hourly, and 10 minute. I get asked a lot. That's why I'm doing it multiple times. And then you want to make sure that you use a good stop. How many people in here suffer from being a serial killer of profits? You get in something, you tighten up the stop too tight, and then it stops you out, and then it runs in the entire same direction that you originally had it in. Or you had a nice little, you had a nice little run, and then you had a lot of cash here, and then it comes down here, stops you out, and you turned a cash trade into a loss trade. Very common. We call you serial killers of profits. One way to fix that is start doing some research into the parabolic SAR. It fixes a lot of people's issues that have those common issues. All right, All right let's go into uh, the scanning part of it. Now, this is Metastock. Now, the cool thing about Metastock is uh, Gibby has built a scanner into it, a uh, custom that anybody here can have it. It's, so I don't care if you take the course or not. It's just included as a, a free gift from uh, from uh, uh, Metastock, and, and, and Jeff is the one that built it. So here's how this thing works. So what you do is you open up Metastock, and you go File, and then you go Open Power Console, and it's already built in here for you, okay? And then once that pops up, this is going to pop up. You have to download the software first, and, and, and then all you do is you just go start exploration. And it'll go through, and it'll do all of its math, and it'll take it a little minute here, and then it'll, it'll, it'll crunch it, and it's going through all of the, the, the stocks on the S&P 500, and it's searching for things that are newly above, uh, yeah, Jeff Gibby, yep, uh -huh. uh, newly above or below the cloud. And then you just let this thing do its own thing, and then it'll spit out a list of stuff that you can then copy to your uh, – your um, clipboard and then put into the charting package, right? So uh, I'm gonna let this thing chew. It doesn't take it that long. I've already done this, and then once it done, once it's done, all you have to do is it'll say report done, and then you can grab that report. Okay, so that'll make it easy. So you won't have to go through all S and P 500, all 500 of those stocks. It'll just do it for you. See how it happened? And then you can just go, okay, reports. All right, and then here is a list of everything that was uh, above the cloud on Friday, eBay, Franklin, Goodyear, Philip Morris, uh, RGN, uh, T. Rowe Price. Here's everything that was below the cloud, like newly above or newly below. All right, so what I've done is I've already done most of this, so I'm going to move this out of our way. I just want to make you aware that that's freely available, and that's going to be just a freebie that Metastock is going to give you for attending the workshop, and it works in Metastock. Now, let's go through... And now that you know a little bit about what's going on, let's go through all the major futures or all the major futures markets real quick, okay? And I'll show you another way. Like if you don't have a power scanner like Metastock, I'll walk you through another way that you can you can use another free piece of software too. All right, but let's watch this. It's really powerful. So I'm going to go through. What do you think that the Nasdaq is in right now? Look at there. Is that an uptrend or a downtrend that Nasdaq's in? I mean, it's pretty simple, right? That's You want to be long, that creature, right? That's easy. Now, notice when it pulled back to both the turning and the standard line, they held pretty good and it bounced off of there. Well, what, what about the ES? What's the ES look like? Uh, once again, 
pretty strong. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, the Russell. I mean, where is the Russell at here? Uh, I don't know if I have the Russell on this one, but here, let's take a look at the Dow. So look at the Dow also. Now, between the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ, which one was the strongest one according to Ichimoku? It was definitely the NASDAQ, right? So we want to focus on that on the smaller time frames when we get another 10-minute buy signal on that. Now, if we go down here and we look at the DAX, look at the DAX. The DAX, also a nice little long. Let's take a look if we can see the Euro stocks 50. Euro stocks 50. Boom. Also a good long off of that cloud. See how it sold off to the cloud? Boom. And then jumped above. So that's a good long trade. All right. Now, we're going to go through all these because what I'm doing is I'm trying to look for something that I want to trade on Monday. Now, I'm already long the NASDAQ, so I don't need to get re-long the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the Bund. The Bund futures. Oh, looky here. Uh, one, two, three bars below the cloud. Which way we reckon the Bund's going to go next week? Probably lower, right? So that means for our 10-year note, all right, our 10-year note's probably going to be a little bit short. Now, this one's above the cloud. Notice that it went below the turning line, and then it's trying to get below the standard line. It, when we have it in between here, between the turning and the standard line, I like to leave it alone, okay? If we go from the yellow to the purple, that's fine, but when we're 50% in, I'm going to leave that creature alone. So let's now go look at the 30-year bond. The 30-year bond is, oh, look here went below the turning and closed below the standard line. I like that uh, going down here and touching the cloud then. Now, on Friday, it closed slightly above. On Thursday night, we went short. We went short. Believe it or not, we got the high, the the the, the very tick top of that, just by luck. I wouldn't call it skill. And then we covered down in here. Okay, so we made about 750 bucks on that trade. And now it's closing back above. I have to reset, and I'll reestablish on Sunday evening. All right. That's the bond market. That's interest rates. Let's go. Let's take a look at gold, the big GC contract. Uh, the big GC contract. So where is gold right now? It's in a it's in a bullish mode, but it closed slightly below the purple. If it closes below the purple, where is it probably going to go? It's probably going to go to the top of the cloud. That's a that's a nice trade. I like the bonds short. So I'm gonna write this down. And if you hear me scribbling in the background, I'm actually just taking my own notes because I'm doing my homework with you live. I'm going to do gold lower, uh, bonds lower. Okay, cool. And then if, uh, so I like those two. And then if I want to do crude oil, what do I think crude oil is going to go? Uh, crude oil is a, a good short. It's probably going to go lower. Now, I've been short crude oil ever since it broke the purple line, so that's pretty decent. Now, if you've never traded bacon, this is what bacon's doing, also called lean hogs. And check this out. Feeder cattle. What is feeder cattle right now? Uh, pretty simple, right? Once it broke one, two, three bars above the cloud, massive long, and then it came back down here, tested this, didn't even touch that, touched the yellow again, and then took off again. So you see why I want to scan these things for new longs? One to three bars above the cloud, okay? Same thing with uh, live kettle. You have to say it that way. Live kettle, uh, three above the cloud, back down, three above the cloud, back up. Okay, so that's how you do that type of stuff. If you want to do it on a bunch of other stuff, and then this is just a workspace that I have built into uh, Metastock's charting platform. And you can see here's the grains, here's corn. For me on this situation on corn, just too much sideways. It's not a hell yes, so it's a leave me alone. Okay, if I look at wheat, wheat on Metastock here, it's a good counter trend short. In other words, I would short it as soon as it can close back below 417 and a half, okay? And then last here, we're gonna look at soybeans. Soybeans, we are looking at a good solid short, and you can see when soybeans cross below here for at least three bars, and I have my lagging line, good short, okay? And then you also got the softs that you can take a look at. You can look at cocoa. There's cocoa, cocoa's just a raging short, all right? You got coffee. Coffee is also a really good short, right? And then you've got OJ. OJ's not really doing anything, uh, kind of sideways. And then you've got sugar. Sugar is a good short ever since it broke three bars below there. And then we reestablish every time it hits the turning line. It'll also work really good on currencies. I'm going to take a look here and look at the euro. So the euro is a long into resistance. Japanese yen. 
Japanese yen. I would be a buyer down here at the top of the cloud. Now, here are some symbols that I found on Thursday with the scan that uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff fixed for us. Okay, so here are some Thursday trades. So let's go through these. CBG. That's a new long. You guys see that? That's a new long. All right. Cisco. So I'm just going to go through some of these. Cisco. That's a new long. LEN. That's a new long. LKQ. That's a new long. MPC. That's a new long. MMC. You see how easy this is? And like I said, Jeff's already built the scan for you. We can come down here. And now I can also go down here to Friday and I can go boom. Click right here on Friday. Uh, that one's in the cloud. I'd leave that one alone. Okay. Let's go AIV, oh, below the cloud, but kind of sideways. I would pass on that one. BIIB, below the cloud. That's a good looking short. Good looking short. Also, I can look at eBay. Good looking long. You see how that's working? So, all I'm looking for is one to three bars above or below the cloud. Does everybody understand what I'm doing here? It's pretty simple. Here's uh, Fox is a new short. It's only one bar. I need the white line to go with me, so I'd have to wait and let this creature close probably another two days below before I started messing with it. All right, so now I've got a list of all the things that I can trade based upon Thursday scan and Friday scan, and I can go, okay, what, what's the short side look like? BIIB looks great, right? And then I would just filter through all of these ones either above or below the cloud and see which ones looked best to my eye. And if I'm going, oh, yeah, that looks really good, then I trade that. And if it's kind of sideways, then I would pass on it. Now, if you don't have something as powerful uh, as, say, Metastock or any of the other major platforms that have Ichimoku uh, put on it, you can use this software. It's free, but I recommend that you take up uh, Metastock on their trial offer, 30 days for uh, a, a trial, and, and they've got really good charts. And he's also already built a scan for you. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to stockcharts.com. And what you could do is you could go down here and go to predefined scan results. And this is free, okay? Same thing. Um, and then you would go, you'd scroll down here, and then you would go down here to candlestick patterns. And I don't have any relationship with any of these guys. I'm just, it's a free piece of software where it says Ichimoku patterns. And then I would just left click and then left click, moved above or below the cloud. And then what I can do is I can filter based upon the exchange that I want to look at for either one of those. And then I just come down here to something like on the NASDAQ, and I can say AM or AIMC. I click this chart here, and then I just have to format this chart. It's not going to be as good as Metastock, um, but, you know, some people, for whatever reason, don't like having good charts. I don't know why. Um, and then what you can do is you can go right here. You can go um, Ichimoku full, and you have to format all this stuff. Make sure it says none on everything because we're just trying to keep it really nice and clean and concise. And then, boom, and then I hit update all. And you can see, boom, there's AIMC. That's a new, fresh long. Okay, then I can just come right back here, and then go, okay, NASDAQ Healthcare, uh, ALKS, copy. And then I can go, boom, right here. I can go paste right there, and boom, there's a new long. That one's sideways. I would pass. You can do the same thing for the shorts. I come over here to the short side, look for something on the NASDAQ. Uh, here's AEGN, AEGN. Come over here, put it on the chart, right kick. Click, copy, and paste, and boom, there's a new short, all right? So do you see the power of Ichimoku and how it will quickly tell you whether we should be going up, down, or sideways? If we're going up, we're going to go long. Down, we're going to go short. Sideways, we're going to leave it alone, all right? All right, let me finish up my PowerPoint here, and then we'll go through, and I'm actually going to pick the actual equity and the future that I'm going to trade uh, the future will be Sunday evening or Monday morning, and then the, the stock will be, uh, I'll give you one long and one short here, okay? So we've already talked about some stops to use. Um, we talked about, uh, I went through some live trade setups on live charts for you. Um, here is uh, some success stories. The course was awesome. I've taken one bond trade, made over $900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted again where I took profit earlier today after you made me greedy for possible further drops. I'm happy dancing. This is the first time I've had a successful trade during a course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler. All right. Uh, do you go over the entry point? Yeah, in the course I go over the entry point in detail, yeah. Uh, success stories. Um, <clears throat> sorry, guys, my throat's messing up. 
Thanks. You're likely one. Uh, you're likely the only reason I have kept at trading now that I'm profitable. I cannot thank you enough. It was really great, and I can't wait to attend your other classes. Here's another one from Ron, just saying he likes our stuff. So, will you be one of our next success stories? So, I'm inviting a few of you to join us. So, we do this class every week, all right, for four, four weeks at a time, and we've got some open spots. So, let me walk you through. Well, first, let's talk about who this is not for. If you are a holy grail seeker, if you think you're going to turn $5,000 into $1.5 million by the end of May, this course is not for you. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme, okay? If you're a guru surfer, if you follow me and all these guys online and 9,000 other guys, just pick one or two of us, right? Figure out what we're trying to do and try to emulate it. If you can't make a decision, obviously the course is not for you. If you like to make things more complicated for no good reason, please never take any of my courses or buy any of my stuff. We just won't get along. I just know. All right? Okay. Who is this for? If you are serious about making real money in the markets, if you are looking for a proven system, which Ichimoku is, according to the back testing, if you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, and if you understand that your success is actually tied to you taking action and you take responsibility for your trades, you know I get along just fine. All right? So here's a fraction of what you'll learn in the number one best-selling Ichimoku course on the market. Seven proven setups, my favorite seven setups on Ichimoku. Uh, trading rules and indicator settings of Ichimoku. Checklist with cheat sheets, with entries and exits, stop losses and targets, how to scan the markets for Ichimoku, which I went through a little bit of that today, how to filter out the best trades so that you never guess what to do next. All right, And I'll also show you a couple dreaded head fakes on how to, uh, to uh, avoid those creatures because there are a couple that you need to be aware of. All right, so the Ichimoku Cloud course is 197. And then I'm going to throw in, and it's an on-demand course. You can watch it right now as soon as you do that, and you can start going through the on-demand course through all of the material. And then I'm going to give you one, two, three, four follow-up live webinars just like this one where we get together every Tuesday evening, either at 7 or 8, 8 p.m. It's either, we change the times around. It's either 6, 7, or 8 on Tuesday where we scan all the markets, update them, and then we make a list of longs and shorts every Tuesday. Okay. Um, total value is 682. There is a catch. What we do is we limit this um, to the number of people that we can support in the weekly classes. Your special offer today will be $97. The special catch is there are currently 41 people uh, on the back end of their four uh, follow-up live webinars. So there are four follow-up webinars in next week. So I've got 41 spots available that, that I can enroll new people in order to go through. I try to keep them small so that if you have questions, I can answer you. Usually the webinars last anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour on Tuesday. All right. So the link, if you want to order the course to learn more about the proper use of Ichimoku, is hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. All right. Hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. And there is your link in the chat box. I've got about seven more minutes. So let me go over here to the uh, the charts again real quick. I'm going to remove my little drawing mechanism here. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go through and try to find you two really good trade setups, okay? So I'm going to move this down here, and you should be able to see that link. Can everybody see that link right there? That's the link that you order through, hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. So let's figure out the equity first, okay? Let's go off of just the Friday scans, okay? So we're going to go AAL. That looks pretty good on the long side. It does, it's not perfect because you see how we've got one, two, three, four, five bars, and then it went back into the cloud. Boom. And the lagging line crossed back below. You want to avoid that one. Okay. ADI. This is a good looking short. I like this one. This is a really good looking short. So I'm going to add it to my short list. ADI. So I'm, I've got that on my paper now. All right. AIV. Nope, two sideways. See how this one's doing the sideways mambo jumbo? Is the live webinar, are they recorded? Yes, it, 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 uh, it's a $97 one-time fee. It is not a subscription. And every live webinar where we meet four times a week uh, or one time a week for the next four weeks, they're all recorded if you can't make them. Yes, they are. So AVI, I'm going to pass. 
B I I B. I like that to the short side. B I I B. I may give you two longs and two shorts so you can choose. Okay, let's take a look here at eBay. eBay, it's a decent long. I like eBay to the high side. E B A Y. Okay. All right, I got five more minutes here to finish up. E Q T. It's a good looking short there. I think the other ones are a little stronger. F R T. Mm, nasty looking, isn't it? Nice and yeah, FRT to the downside. We've already got two really good shorts. Let's see if we can find one more along here. Nope. Uh, sideways. Oh, here we go. Good word. Eh, it's kind of sideways. Good your tires are a little sideways. All right, let's go down here to. That's a good looking short. Okay, so let me just do this mentally. That's a man. Coles. Let's see here. That's a good short, too. We need just one more long. Let's go PB. That's strong right there. That's a good looking right there. All right. PM. PM. Philip Morris. Let's do REGN. REGN sideways. T R O W. All right. So here's the list. Here's your two longs and two shorts. All right. The first one for next week ADI short. B I I B short. The longs are going to be eBay, E B A Y, and then Philip Morse, which is P M. Okay. Uh, t -t 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 any questions? Can't find cross in my power console. Um, you, uh, Jeremy, you, uh, Jeff, Jeff Gibby set it up, and he will give you the <laughs> exe. Yeah. You got it. You just have yeah, to you... download it. So I put a link right there in the uh, in the chat as an answer. If you go there, it'll allow you to download the Dropbox link. It's dated April twenty seventh because we just finished it. <laughs> so just grab it from that download link, run it. As long as you've got MetaStock fifteen, it'll import and run no problem. Perfect. So there you go. Jeff has hooked you up. If you're a MetaStock user, like I said, all you got to do it's super simple. You just open it up and then you download that and then you say boom. Do my do my work for me. Explore and then start the exploration, and then it'll kick you out the symbols, and then you're good to go. He made it super simple, dead easy for you. If you're a MetaStock user, I like MetaStock charts too. They're nice and pretty. Now your charts may not match mine perfectly because I changed the colors on the background because I wanted to stand out. But you can format it. It's really easy. It's not hard. You just come on here and go like this. And all I did is I just messed with the colors. If you want your colors to mess uh, to match mine, lagging line's going to be white, turning line's going to be yellow. Standard line is going to be purple. An up cloud is blue, and a down cloud is red. That's all done in the display tab under the analysis properties. Really easy to do. You're just going to left click on your line when you see that squiggly line. It's going to pop up there. It's going to give you the display, and then you can just mess with your colors. Okay, so it's super easy to use. All right, guys, that is going to do it for me. I I am done within two minutes. Good luck. I hope it helps. If you're interested in taking uh, one of the spots, we got a few available. HubertCenters.com forward slash cloudy. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next week. Jeff, thanks for having me. Thanks, Hubert. According to my watch, we have like five minutes. So we're going to go ahead and play a video, and uh, everybody get up and stretch, and uh, we'll be right back with uh, the next presenter, Steve Primo. You should be able to see Metastock. I wanted to show you how to grab that link real quick. It's really easy to do. Um, if you click on that little bit.ly link, it'll take you right here to a Dropbox website. Uh, this is where I uploaded the scan. What you'll do is you'll just click on this little download. You'll do direct download. That'll grab the file for you. You run that uh, from your browser, and it'll just push itself into Metastock. So very, very easy to do. If you have any issues or any questions, just drop me an email, and I'll help you with it. So... What's the link to the Batcave? Well, I think the link that you're looking for is this one. So here you go. There's the link to the Batcave. There's the exact link to this Dropbox file. Again, it's very, very easy. It's just an executable. You're going to run it as soon as you download it, and it will uh, import itself into Metastock. So no issues there at all. Um, let's go back over to the PowerPoint here real quick. 
Hope you guys are, how are we doing today? You guys enjoying the session? Good, good, good to hear, good to hear. Having some issues here with the GoToWebinar. It doesn't want to show my face as well as my PowerPoint at the same time. So that's fine. Um, from current slide. All right. All right. Can you guys all see Hubert Centers? Mike, I'd be happy to email you the link. Uh, drop me an email or else I will forget. Anybody that wants to get a hold of me is certainly welcome to you. Uh, there's my email address for you. Okay, I'm going to try this webcam again. Okay, see it's gone full screen. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and kind of, uh, here's that link. I just pasted it in there. Instead of trying to click on it, you can just double click on it. Again, it's just going to take you that. That'll add it to the Power Console. Hubert showed you how to run it. Very, very easy to do. Uh, it's been a great session today. We have had so many um, just really good speakers and really good talks and uh, the next one is not going to be any exception to that rule. I do want to take a moment to thank our sponsor Stocks and Commodities Magazine. If you don't have Stocks and Commodities you should and uh, I hope you signed up for a free issue of Stocks and Commodities when you did the uh, registration. Also if you do any of the purchases of any of the add-ons that we do today it's going to include two free years of Stocks and Commodities. So they're great partners of ours. Uh, great magazine. Well, you know you're, you know the importance of education. I, I think in life you're either always getting better or you're getting worse, right? So uh, what a great way to kind of always be looking at kind of what you're doing in trading and picking up different tips and tricks every week, every month. And uh, it's just a great a great magazine, something I've read for north of 20 years now that I've been uh, doing this for so long. So. Uh, Elton asks a question. If I buy something, I have a three-year subscription. Will it be extended? Yes, it will, Elton. That is correct. Okay. If you want to sign up for Metastock, uh, we do offer an extended trial. Thanks to you for everybody that uses Metastock. If you want to get an extended trial, the way that it works is it's buy one month, get three months. You can do that at metastock.com slash summit 3 for one Okay. Uh, there's the pricing for it. You can also call our, our uh, we've got two sales guys here that will be happy to answer any questions you have. The phone number is 800-882-3040. John, I did see your question that says, are you seeing this? I didn't see the question before that though, but I am looking at the chat. So we do have a lot. There's a huge pe amount of people here today. And uh, so if I missed a question, uh, make sure to type it in again. And I'm doing my best to kind of keep up.